<laughs> so, just to be clear, I did not come up with a title for this presentation, just, just so you know. <laughs> um, okay, so, um, when, I was, when I was given this, this presentation a, uh, a few weeks ago to deliver, um, I, I was a bit dreading it because um, I do kind of hate doing customer case studies um, on stage because I always feel like, you know, is, is there going to be stuff that applies to the audience? How closely do I have to stick with it? You know, how much can I say other stuff? But luckily, um, Reading um, are a great use case for almost um, all universities, which is fantastic. Um, just before we start, how many people in the room are existing Bongar customers? Can you pop your hand up? Oh, wow, great. I'm preaching to the choir. Love it. <laughs> okay. Um, so, Bongar's worked with over 650 universities worldwide. Um, by the looks of it, just like turn around and you'll find yourself... Yeah. Ah. Sorry. Okay, I will avoid doing that. Okay, so um, we've worked with uh, over 650 universities um, worldwide. Um, just turn around and you'll find a Baumgart customer, which is good. Um, so, see, I tapped again, didn't I? <laughs> right, okay. Right, I shall, tap, I shall tap the keys very lightly. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, yeah, all right, okay, good. Um, so, the University of Reading had um, quite a few objectives um, with... Um, uh, in their implementation. They wanted to consolidate um, their support tools um, because like a lot of universities, they were using a lot of different tools and a lot of different um, departments. Um, so the infrastructure team were mostly using um, sort of RDP and Windows networking tools. Um, and then the service desk were, were using a variety of different tools as well. Um, they wanted to be able to support off-network devices um, because at the time of implementation, they only had uh, support for on-network um, university-owned devices. And they're also uh, looking to restructure their service desk. Um, so they were look looking to start supporting students as well as faculty, um, which obviously brings a load of challenges around um, BYOD, bring your own device. Um, and they, uh, they also... Um, were looking to move to a situation where you had a uh, sort of consolidated tier one service desk across all departments. Um, I'm sure this is familiar to uh, a lot of you in the room. Um, a lot of universities have uh, specialist departments that have their own IT budget and resources. Um, and what the university were wanting to do is um, bring the tier one um, service together um, and then you could move on to other specialist departments as well, um, which meant improving inter-team communication and collaboration. Um, and they also wanted, with the influx of students as well as staff, they wanted to make sure that they had um, all the channels necessary to provide the support they, uh, they wanted to provide. Um, and they wanted to improve the consistency and reliability of the information that was stored in their ticketing system. Now, part of that would be addressed by going to one tier one team because then everyone would be using a consistent system. Um, but the other, the other aspect of it was making sure that the correct information was put into the ticket at the end of the session so that they could look back and see a complete history of what happened. Um, they're also looking at a way of providing secure vendor access as well. A lot of universities have external vendors that come in, do maintenance on servers or... Uh, support specialist software inside the university. Um, and they wanted to do it all um, securely. That was a light tap one. <laughs> okay. Um, they also had a number of environmental uh, changes that they were going through at the time. They um, introduced campuses in Malaysia, which brought with it a whole new set of challenges. Um, already talked about the service desk realignment. Um, adding support for students. Um, they're also changing, they're in the process of changing their ITSM um, system um, and they were moving away from a highly customised um, BMC um, installation to a more sort of standard uh, top desk one. Okay, so some of the challenges they faced 
Um, they were unable to support non-Windows devices. Um, they obviously had students coming along. I'm sure this is very familiar with a lot of you guys in the room. Students come along, they've got their tablet, they've got the phone. They want it all to connect to the university systems. Um, and students being students, they want it to just work straight away without having to deal with anyone. Um, international campuses, they have very low bandwidth um, in some of their international locations. So uh, that was a challenge. Um, as I said before, students coming in with multiple devices meant quite a large increase in the number of devices that they were supposed to be supporting um, without um, much additional resource going into the service desk in terms of personnel. Um, they need to collaborate across teams. Uh, this is especially important with the new centralized structure, so they need to be able to have stuff going into tier one, but then tier one needed to be able to collaborate effectively with the specialists in the different university departments. Um, they uh, wanted to provide a consistency of support, so I've already mentioned that. Um, increased customer expectations, so uh, everyone wants the moon on a stick. Okay, I'm sure you're all familiar with this problem. Um, students arrive, staff arrive, they want to bring their own devices, they want their fancy iPhones to work on the network and they want it to all happen without them having to do much at all. Um, and I've already mentioned they wanted to improve the reliability of ticket information. Um, and this was especially um, important with the interaction with the specialist teams because um, once you move that tier one away from their, from their department, you need to mean that they, can't, they can no longer just like shout to the guy and say, you know, what was this guy wanting to talk about? You know, you, you have to have a consistent set of information they can refer to. Um, and they had particular security privacy um, concerns, things around like data residency, what you can see on the device if you're providing remote support, that sort of thing. Okay, so Bongar to the rescue. <laughs> um, all right, so one thing is um, the way Bongar works is it's any device to any device. So you can provide support using Android, iOS, Windows, Mac or Linux. Um, and you can then support those devices as well. So it's not like some tools where the, the bit that your technicians use has to go on Windows, but they can support more devices. They can be on their iPad, they can be on their Android tablet, supporting users on any of those platforms. Um, so that instantly knocked over the problem with only being able to survive Windows. Um, also, um, Bomgar um, is able to provide um, support off network as well. Um, because we have an appliance, it sits in your, in your DMZ and all the connections from outside can come to the appliance and they're bridged by the appliance. So, um, we looked at in implement, implementing chat um, using Bomgar as well. Um, they had a number of reasons for this. One, um, students were coming from a generate, they're coming from a generation that's used to interacting via instant message, chat, that kind of thing. They're comfortable with that kind of interaction um, in a way that sort of um, university faculty may be a bit slower to adopt. Um, so they wanted to add a chat channel for those students. Um, and it also allowed us to um, use uh, pre-prepared chat messages, what we call CAN messages, for uh, knowledge-based articles um, that they get asked about a lot. So instead of having someone come in um, asking about a password reset, um, they could come into the chat, they get a quick response saying, oh, here's, here's the online tool for resetting your password. I'll stay connected with you. Um, and then if you have a problem, come back, let me know, and I can then take control of your computer and guide you through the process. So it's not just about throwing people the information and saying, sort it out yourself. Um, you also want to keep that kind of interaction so they don't feel like you're abandoning them, but you're encouraging them to try other tools, try other avenues to get the support. Um, okay, so also um, the chat um, can be integrated um, with their top desk support portal so they can go to that portal, click on chat, generate a ticket. I'll talk about that in a bit. So... Collaboration. Um, Bomgar allows you to uh, share sessions 
um, with other people. So you can, you can maintain control of the session but bring experts in to help you. And those can be people from a different team within your organization or they can be um, third party uh, vendors. So you can, you can bring a vendor in to a discussion, you still control the interaction with the customer, but you can get that expert help live. Um, that has a few advantages over the traditional model of like just transferring the ticket and then the other person contacting the customer separately. One, it's a much better customer interaction because they get their problem fixed when they contact you the first time. Um, two, um, they, um, there's a consistency of um, support for the customer. They get into the habit of only contacting one, one service desk rather than sometimes what happens is you escalate a ticket, someone from a second level team gets in touch with the customer, starts a session, and then, you know, just by being friendly, whatever, on the call or on the chat, the customer gets to know who that person is. And the next time they get a problem, they ignore the service desk entirely and just go straight to that person. Yeah, it's, a, it's a real issue. Um, well, for everyone, um, including universities. Um, so they also um, integrated with TopDesk, which meant that um, all of the interaction that happened on every Bombgar session was written into a TopDesk uh, incident um, related to, uh, to that issue. So um, they could bring in the vendors in a controlled way. Um, they could record everything that happened and everything got written into the ticket. So they had a single point, TopDesk became a single point of truth in their environment because they knew that you know, even if the service desk guy was having a busy day and didn't really add much notes himself, they knew that all the chat transcripts, all the stuff about what happened in the session was going to be written back into the ticket automatically. Okay. Um, and uh, so I've already talked a bit about this, but the integration with TopDesk what you can see here is like the self-service portal um, of TopDesk um, and you've got a uh, Bomgar chat icon, better have a pointer, the Bomgar chat icon is the orange one and then the, um, the grey one is for entering in a session key. So you can go to the portal, you can start a chat with support, it'll auto generate um, a ticket with some default values and record everything that happens. Um, or if you've got an existing case um, and the support technician's given you a Bomgar session key, so uh, maybe, you, uh, maybe you phoned up the support desk instead of wanting to chat straight away, they give you a session key, you type that in um, in your top desk portal and that will then um, integrate with the instant that they've created as well. So the technicians can start a session from a ticket and the customers can start a session from the portal as well. Um, they can even go into their own tickets if you enable that in TopDesk and open up one of their tickets and request a session that's then linked to that instant as well. Okay, so um, multi-platform, oh, I'm going a bit fast here. Uh, multi-platform, um, we can support everything, so that's great. International campuses, the um, BOMGAR is quite an efficient um, system. It can run quite well over 3G um, dongle connections, which means connecting to international campuses is, uh, is very easy. Um, we do have um, a number of other university customers that have the same use case. Um, one of them um, supports students in uh, Africa as well on effectively prepaid mobile phone connections and they just plug the phone into their uh, laptop and then they can remote control the machine and that works well for them as well. Um, the increased number of student devices, there are a few kind of like uh, things you can do with BombGuard that help you, um, help you deal with that influx um, that you get in uh, September. One of the ones that works really well, I've seen implemented at a few universities, um, I don't think Reading have done this one, but we'll ignore that. Um, that you can create um, iOS, uh, what are called iOS profiles, which are like uh, 
little files where you can set certain corporate settings like your email settings, your VPN settings, your Wi-Fi hotspots. Um, and what you can do is you can make those profiles bon uh, public, which is when you go onto your BombGuard portal, um, the website that the appliance generates um, from one of those devices, um, it brings up a list of the profiles. So if you're a student, you can log on with your phone, go to your I know support.reading.ac.uk. You can see the list of profiles that are available to you, and you can install those profiles on your device yourself just by clicking the link. And that way, all of your settings are already configured for you. Um, and you can even take those public URLs and encode them into like a QR code, and then just print it on your influx and your incoming student documentation. So if they've got iOS devices, take a picture of the QR code, go to the site, download the profiles, and they're done. Device set up on the network without them ever having to come and interact with your support team, which is, um, I've seen that work well at other universities. Um, so we've, uh, we've talked about the fact that they've got, um, uh, they added chat, um, and that can really help efficiency as well. Um, it has to, you have to be quite, I mean, I could talk about chat for another half hour, um, but we're limited by time here. But you, you, when you're implementing chat, you have to be very careful about how you do it. It's not just a case of turning it on and then just letting your service desk rip with it. You need to have people that are dedicated chat people because otherwise you're not going to get the efficiency. Because if you're talking on a phone, you can only do one session at a time. If you've got chat sessions, you can do multiple sessions at once. Um, my personal record, by the way, is 11 sessions at one time with different customers. That was in a pub in Marlow as well on my mobile. <laughs> um, okay, um, so collaborating across teams, they could introduce warm handovers. So instead of just taking the user, the user contacts the service desk, oh, it's a problem with your uh, chemistry software, I need to... Uh, you need to contact the uh, departmental uh, guy and then just transfer in the ticket over, which means the customer then has to either go contact them or they contact him. Either way, it's another interaction. Um, instead of doing that, they could see who, who was logged in um, into Bomgar in that department, send them a message, get them into the session, and then they can see what they're seeing. They can go back over the log see all of the steps that have been taken on that session. They can click a button in the rep console. The rep console is what um, the technicians use in Bomgar. They can click a button on that, and it will open up top desk. They can see the whole history of the incident as well. So there's a lot of information available to them. It makes that whole process much more uh, simple. Um, and then um, you, the, uh, the original service desk person can either leave the session and um, start another one, or they can stay in, and you can get a bit of free tuition um, for your service desk as well. Um, so, reliability of ticket information, that comes from the top desk integration, um, and then security privacy settings. So, um, BombGuard allows you to be quite uh, granular about what you allow the technicians to do, and different technicians from different departments can have different permissions. Um, and uh, you can uh, also customize what the customer um, gets asked when they do their, uh, when they accept the session. So um, uh, Reading went for, uh, once you've agreed to have us connect, we can do whatever we want. Some universities like to ask permissions for each feature. Um, you can do, yeah, I can see you there. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a balance for, for you guys to decide on um, but whatever however granular you want to make it um, we can support it ok any questions about Reading or anything else preferably Bombay related yeah that's you So um, a large, 
Let's see. I, I, I mean, I'm just going by guesswork here, but um, I would estimate about 35 to 40% have an integration. Um, we'll integrate with a lot of different products, so we can generally um, integrate with most of the university equipment. Even if we don't have an inbuilt integration, the likelihood is we can build one for you um, using, uh, using consultancy. Oh, I see. <laughs> so it was of the people. Oh, sorry. No, no. Yeah, just Even. of the people that have got Bomgar in place, how many um, organisations have got it integrated with their IT service management tool? Gordon represents two universities, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised by that. Oh, answer my question. Yeah. Hi. Um, you talked about the chat a lot. Really interested yeah. in that. Um, the chat sessions that are open up and recorded, everything's recorded. Yeah. The integration with Reading and um, Topdesk, does it raise the tickets in Topdesk itself? Does it actually populate into a ticket? Yeah, that it does. So they click on the they click on the chat, and then um, top desk. Um, we use the top desk API to create a ticket with some default values in top desk, and then the um, technician at the end of the session can go into that ticket and change those values to uh, what they should be. Anything else? Got five minutes. Yeah, see, I think it's I think it's all like partying last night. Yeah. Oh yeah, the, sorry. The other thing that before my sales guy shouts at me um, is um, we've also got a draw for um, a Bongar, a free Bongar appliance plus some licenses um, at our stand. We're going to be doing um, after this, so I guess everyone's entered into that draw, right? Well, half of you haven't because you're already bombed our customers, but the other half, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> what, for an extra appliance? Yeah. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah.